Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Don O'Dell's Legends. My name is Art Tapaldi. I'm the editor of Blues Music Magazine. And uh, I would ask you to check us out either on Facebook or at our website, bluesmusicstore.com. Uh, tonight here at Don O'Dell's Legends, and Legends is, is the appropriate title for tonight because once again, Don has brought in a legendary performer. Um, he's a dear friend of mine. I've known Bob Margolin for 25 years since we sat together on the Blues Foundation Board of Directors back in the 90s. Yes, it was. But uh, Bob, uh, he writes for our magazine, Blues Music Magazine. Bob does a, a column in every issue and has been doing that since this magazine began and also Blues Review, right? Very close to the beginning of, of uh, Blues Review. How, how it started was uh, somebody called me up to interview me and I said, by the way, I've been doing some writing for local entertainment uh, magazine in North Carolina and I wonder if you guys would be interested in the pieces. So I sent one to Bob Vorell, sure, and he wow. wrote every, he put them through every, every one of them uh, since then, since yeah. about 93 or so. Yeah, because that magazine started in 91 or 92, so you've been around with that magazine since its beginning and now Blues Music Magazine since our beginning. We, we just sent our 18th issue to the printer this morning with again another column by Bob. But you know, here we are talking about his columns. Uh, what really needs to be talked about is the, the, the wonderful resume you have in music. Um, I don't know how many of our fans are new to the blues, but uh, Bob was Muddy Waters guitar player from 1973 to 1980. Is that correct? I have yeah, the those right. are the right years. That's, yeah, and that's good. Most people will even say my name wrong or spe spell it wrong, but <laughs> we're doing great so far. Yeah, and and well, that's because we've known each other. But you know, so here is this guy Bob Margolin who grew up in Brookline, Massachusetts, and you hook up with Chicago blues legend Muddy Waters. How? What was the blues scene like for you? You must have been in your late teens. In, in no. The, uh, Actually, in 1973, when I joined Muddy's band, I was 24 years old. Okay. And there, w there was a teenager in the band, Hollywood Fats. No way! Oh. Uh, we were in, in, he he joined the band in March of 1973. I joined the band in uh, in late August. And so there was about three months when we were Muddy's wow. two guitar players. Wow. And there is a wonderful video you can find uh, of Muddy Waters on the Midnight Special uh -huh. with um, uh, Hollywood Fats right. playing guitar, me playing guitar. Oh, was wow. one, uh, I'd been in the band a week. Wow. And wow. we were already in a, well, beautiful downtown Burbank with yeah. studios where, where that was. Where at, yeah. 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 And, uh, Willie Big Eyes Smith on the drums, George Mojo Dreamy Eyed, good looking Buford on the <laughs> harmonica, as Muddy would introduce him if I he had, had a little. Piano player was. Yeah, Pine Top Perkins was in there, and cool. uh, Muddy used to tease him a lot for being old because he was born in 1913 <laughs> compared to the 1915 that Muddy claimed. He claimed. Uh, yeah. And I'm yeah. going to give him the respect to go with it. If anybody asks me, when he right. was born or how old he was. That's what he said very consistently. Yeah, yeah. But so it I'm, might not have been, yeah. Well, yeah, according well, to his biographer, Robert Gordon, it wasn't. That's right, I read that book, yeah. By the way, memo to everyone out there watching, you just heard the name Hollywood Fats. Run, don't walk to your YouTube channel and go check out some Hollywood Fats because he was one of the guitar uh, youngsters coming up in the late 60s, early 70s, who was turning the blues world upside down, wasn't he? Yes, yes he was. He had played uh, with uh, James Harmon uh, yeah. by that time and, with, and John Lee Hooker. Right. And I believe he might have been with Albert King for a while. And he was 19 yeah. at the time. I was yeah. 24. But we used to hang out a lot when I first joined Muddy's band. and. Neither of us lived in Chicago, so we'd get a um, room. We'd each get adjoining rooms at the Thunderbird Hotel and on the South Side for eight dollars a night, uh -huh. and uh, go out every night. Wow. Mostly, we would uh, take a cab to Jimmy Rogers' house, mm -hmm. and he would uh, 
uh, take us uh, up to a club where he was working on the north side. Yeah. And uh, also, it was with the Bob Reedy Blues Band. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've I heard of them from name, Chicago. No. I saw them at the Chicago Blues Festival about 2008 or so. Okay. Yeah. Again, yeah. but uh, and they would also have Johnny Young on the show. Wow. Uh, playing either mandolin or guitar. Right. Right. Now, now and Muddy's Jimmy Rogers. nice. Again, memo to everyone out there: if you do not know Jimmy Rogers, run to YouTube and go find out who he was. Yeah, that's one of the most important Chicago bluesmen Absolutely. for his own hits. Absolutely. Like, uh, having done "Walking by, by Myself", myself yep. and that's all right. Yep, yep, yep. But A he Chicago was ten. Bound. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that album, uh, Chicago, the Chicago Bound album, is is like a Bible to it me. Is. I keep it going. Is going back to it for inspiration yeah, it's one yeah. of the main things just like the best of little walter or best of muddy waters exactly yeah so so as a 23 year old you get into muddy waters band with hollywood fats um the band is is uh, uh the foundation of the band is this ensemble playing where it, the original band with muddy and jimmy rogers playing off each other can you explain a little bit to our our viewers what that how that ensemble sound works the the size of um muddy's band had grown to the point where he had uh three guitar players including himself okay. which is a lot yeah but that meant he could not play if he didn't feel like it okay okay <clears throat> and then just do his his featured slide solo mm -hmm. but he played often and it would be the job of the other two guitar players which during my time was either Hollywood Fats or Luther Guitar Jr. Johnson who right. was still with us and I... And he lives about 90 miles from here I think in New Hampshire. Uh, I saw we did a gig together last uh, last September and he said he had moved to Florida but oh, he okay. may be back because okay. Tyler Morris who's a name that's going to come up in a few minutes yeah. uh, saw him last week. Okay, and, yeah, yeah. And through digital technology, we exchange hellos. Right. <laughs> so back to this ensemble um, of this five and six piece band. Can you again explain how that works? What What should people who want to understand Chicago blues a little more, what should they be listening for or paying attention to? You're getting right to the heart of it, Art. There's. It's not like everybody finds their own part and then executes it. Uh, mm -hmm. meaning it just the way it sounds, execute. Yeah. Uh, it's everybody listens to everybody else and through a combination of knowing the language of Chicago blues music, knowing the other players, and a little bit of ESP, mm -hmm. uh, everybody kind of weaves their parts in and out of each, o each other. Uh, say with the guitars if one goes high the other one goes low okay and then if the other one switches the other one is there playing a part that supports it not the same thing at the same time right right but uh finding parts that go together and it's magical it is so much more than say lead and rhythm guitar where one right the rhythm guitar player plays the chords and the uh lead guitar player plays the fills sure. and the solos sure uh and it was very deliberate. Yeah. We never talked about it once while really? I was in the band. Even on the first nights? No, 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 no. no. By, by, that, by that time, I think, from what I'm told, Otis Spann had always kind of trained new members of the mm -hmm. band, but he was gone for a few years by then. Right, right. So you just got on the bandstand and had to pick it up or not. Right, right. And, uh, wow. And... Uh, the very constructive nurturing criticism of Muddy Waters <laughs> would be yeah. a look like that. Yes. Or if he didn't want to hear what you were playing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, tr I tried as hard as I could to give him what he wanted both to learn and, uh, and to... Uh, have for my own music at some sure. later point in time. Yeah. Now you talked about the two guitars high low. At the same point, at the same time, you've got a harmonica player and a, p a keyboard player who are also trying to find space. 
Does that get to be difficult? Or, or is it a matter of just being um, considerate and understanding when to say something and when to allow others? So, sometimes, at, at the worst, it could be, I've got to invent a part that nobody else is playing that sounds good and doesn't get in the way. Right, yeah. And then, when you get a solo, you're going to get two progressions. The first oh, yeah. one, and th this Muddy did say deliberately, you make your statement, and the second one, you drive it all the way home. Wow. And then this is important, wow. too. At the yeah. end of it, he would call what most people call a turnaround mm -hmm. at the end of a, a blues progression. He called it the send back. Okay. You send it back to either the next soloist wow. or the next person that's going to sing. Yeah. I found out more about the planning uh, and the nomenclature mm -hmm. of the, these techniques from Jimmy Rogers later on because right. we stayed friends and Jimmy lived to 1997. That's correct, yeah. And yeah. so I, I always took the opportunity to ask Muddy about these things, but I, I did with Jimmy too. Right. He said that he and, and Muddy and little Walter used to ride around in the very competitive club scene. After a gig, they'd ride around the city and talk about what they could do to put their parts together. They yeah. did it very deliberately back then. Right. By right. the time I got there, you just had to pick it up yourself. Yeah. yeah. But they had a name for uh, wow. for for that that style of playing. Jimmy called it filling in the cracks. Oh, I love it. I love it. There is another name that is e equally good for it. Keith Richards wrote in his biography mm -hmm. a few years ago that the Rolling Stones guitar strategy. Uh, came from that Chicago blues. He didn't ha he didn't know what Muddy and Jimmy called it. Right. But his term his own term because he's a musical genius too. Sure. Is equally good. He called it weaving. Weaving, of course. Yeah, yeah. And and I, I was so yeah. impressed by both right. of it. But it's what I hope to do. Yeah. This evening with right. Tyler Morris, right, who is right. not as uh, experienced in Chicago I blues. But he is very creative, mm -hmm. very fast, and very interactive. His right. mind works fast, and he can play fast cool, too. Cool. He's, he's going to have some flashes of lightning in in his fingers, nice. and that's why I'm so excited about working with young people now. Right. In the same way as I was excited to work with the old masters, I'm just the right age to have caught them when they were, say, 35 years older than me, yeah, yeah. and now still be alive to play the music right. with uh, people who are younger than my socks. Yeah. That <laughs> so you're, I know you're involved with the Pine Top Foundation, teaching down in Clarksdale, teaching young kids the, the, um, uh, the foundations of the blues. How hard is it to teach? What's the hardest thing to teach the young, these young guitar these 12, 15, 18 year old guitar players. Well, I just came back. What do they come in with that you have to unlearn and teach? Yeah. If they're there, it's because they do want to learn something about blues. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, very deliberately, the Pontop Perkins Foundation Masterclass workshops have tried to give them the best experience possible. Um, it would be uh, the same thing that was on your second grade report cards. Okay. Plays well with others. Plays well with others. Most huh? of them uh, don't get a chance to play with anybody, or if they do, the only per people that are interested in deep blues music or, or old school blues music are usually middle-aged. Right. Ty Tyler plays with older musicians. Mm -hmm. So so does uh, a great piano player from Cincinnati that I just worked with, Ben Levin. Okay. Oh, just, God. Just graduated high school. We have his review in our new in the new magazine Do we just sent out. Yeah. Yes. He, yeah. And and Jake Kulik from right down the street, yeah. Connecticut. Yeah. yeah I, I think you were probably there to see uh, Jake was going to Stephen Van Zandt's right. blues school in the Toden, Norway, and, and uh, 
I, I did a gig with, with Jostein. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. And, and and Jake sat in and ripped the place to yeah. pieces. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in in the company of professionals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did when you were playing with Muddy? Let's see if we can do this here. Were you allowed to rip the place to pieces, or is that something that this younger generation thinks is the blues? No, I. I I could play as good and strong as I could play and use whatever showmanship I had. Uh -huh. And Muddy uh, was the least jealous-hearted musician I ever saw. He, he was confident in himso himself that he would not be upstaged in stage presence, singing, or guitar playing okay. with his slide. So he he didn't care if it was little Walter. He's, right. And he had he had exact words for it too. Muddy's exact words for if you have a star in the band, you gotta let him shine. Okay. Okay. And so go ahead, do your best. Okay. So, and sometimes you'd get a big round of applause from the crowd and Muddy would smile at them and and at whoever right. did it because we had a band full of great musicians. Yeah. Yeah. Any of them were capable of tearing it up. Yeah, yeah. Jerry Portnoy was the harp player for most of the time I was there, and uh, he's one of the one of the few uh, people that has a real signature sound. You hear two notes and you know it's Jerry. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Uh, and of course, Pine Top on the piano yeah. couldn't replace. He was he was not a fake Otis Span. He was the real Pine Top. That's right. That's he right. He was older than Otis Span was. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, Luther Guitar Jr. was mm -hmm. and still is one of the best West Side style guitar players ever, but it fit in with Muddy's band. Right, right. It, it, it went real well with it. And we played a show together last uh, September with Luther and me and Jerry back by the Nighthawks. Oh, oh and so, sometimes I really felt like we conquered time. I felt like yeah. I was slipping between the 70s and the present oh my when I was around the, right, those guys right. again. Yeah. Do you find, maybe, maybe I'm hearing too, too, men, too much of this, but that the younger kids under 25 are treating blues like it's nothing more than a guitar solo? Is that something you have to try to train out of them when you get them to the master class? Okay, well, it, it does happen sometimes mm -hmm. because, for instance, uh, I mean, are if, you able to talk to Tyler about that kind of I, I don't balance. have to talk to Tyler okay. about that. He already naturally wants to play in a collaborative way. Oh, good. Nice. We, we've played together exactly twice in Memphis during the IBC. Which is just a jam, uh, a yeah. couple of songs. Uh-huh. Right? And then, uh, again, uh, when we did a Viztone showcase at, at, uh, after the Blues Music Awards. Uh -huh. And there, there's video to prove it, how our guitars go together. And it, it's not just you go high and I'll go low. And it's not like just trading, I'll play a lick and then you play a lick and I'll play something. But they weave. That's nice. They fill in the cracks. And it's on YouTube right now. Yeah. There, there, there's video evidence, right. uh, uh, undoctored raw footage. Right. And, That's nice. uh, and now we have to prove it all week, tonight, tonight and, right. and the, next, the next four nights. That's right. You know, for everybody out there, again, who's watching this, Tyler Morris was here in Don O'Dell's Legends back in March, and we did an extensive interview uh, with Tyler. So if you want to see what Tyler's show is about, you can just simply Google it on Don O'Dell's channel uh, from YouTube, and you can also hear our interview. Um, you've got a new CD coming out in September, you just told me. Yes, it was. That's number what? <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah. Who's counting? Who's counting? Not me. Yeah. yeah. The uh, last one the, was called. It's number next. Yeah. What was the last one called? I, I see the called call. My Road. My Road. My Road, which was. And it. so, the, because there were plenty of personal songs in it, and Pat Morgan thought of that name without having heard any of the music. Really. She great read title. To, to her great credit. Great title. And so the new CD, this has what, now been about three years since My Road? Uh, yeah, two and a half, three. Okay, so you've had enough time now to have new experiences? I, I could see it was time. Yeah. Well, uh, I 
had the idea this time to redo something that I had done. Uh, it, it turned out to be the first la uh, Vistone label group album. Uh, I did an album called In North Carolina because that's where I live and I did it at home. Right. But I played all of it myself. Uh -huh. uh, and I decided to do that again and really take my time with it. Okay. So I've been working on it since January at home and about two weeks ago I finally said I think this is the best I could do. It's finished and nobody had heard it but my wife. Right. Nice. And me. I yeah. didn't want to... Bruce Who's the worst critic, your wife or you? I know. Uh, me. Yeah, I was going to say, But yeah. Bruce Siglauer taught me a long time ago when I worked with him for Alligator, don't send anything unless it's the best you can right. possibly do. Right. Don't yeah. say, but, but this is only a rough yeah, mix, yeah, or yeah. the song's not completed yet. No, you, you have to show it at its best. And I felt this was at its best. The first person mm -hmm. I sent it to was the recording engineer, uh, a golden ear genius named Mark Williams from okay. Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, and said, did I do okay without you? I acknowledge that I learned most of what I know about mixing and mixing f right. and a lot of musical concerns from you. Yeah. And, he, and he went through it song by song, wrote a few comments, but said, this is ready for mastering. Oh, beautiful. And you cannot imagine the... Yeah. Ah, it, it would be like an editor finding out that their mm -hmm. uh, magazine was ready to deliver the printer on time. I know that feeling, Mr. Do Mark you? Dolan. I certainly do. And I just want to say, when I send you a deadline for a column, <laughs> That column is there well before the deadline. I'm you're the soul of punctuality. You're a fa fabulous writer. You know, finally, years now later, decades later, what from Muddy still resonates in, in Bob Margolin when, when he's playing? Well, it is the attitude of collaboration rather than, say, a front man and a side man that's just there to fill a row. You play the piano part, you play the second guitar part, I'll play all the solos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are plenty of great legends that play that way, and yeah. in, in not, not just blues music, that all, all of this is to support me. Muddy, for some reason, all the way back to the recordings he made in Missi mm -hmm. Mississippi in the early 1940s, uh, always liked to work with somebody. He was also great just by himself on the guitar. Yeah. He was fine on acoustic guitar. Yeah. He did have kind of a signature slide guitar solo mm -hmm. that he could count on to tear the house up and he had a few songs like Got My Mojo Working and right. Manish Boy that were guaranteed to close the night yeah. and uh, make him just about unfollowable. Right. Or at least so I was told yeah. by musicians that, like great, uh, let's say, let's say, great, much more famous musicians that right. would bring Muddy on, on to open their tours. Right. Uh, there, there's a, how, there, there was there was one uh, musician. Of course, I won't m mention his name, but. Uh, we had a particularly strong night at a, a college on uh, Long Island, and but we were opening for him, and we came off the stage. The crowd was going crazy, right? And the guy was standing there in the doorway and said, "Gee, Muddy, how am I going to follow that?" Right. And Muddy said, "Just let him cool down a while, son." <laughs> uh, oh, you, well. it, it was cute. The yeah. Guy's a great, great musician, cool. but he, he had been kind of freaked out. And I, I've seen more famous, I've seen superstars. Get, yeah, yeah. Get you and I, out. you and I, Bob, could talk about you know the last waltz and your experiences there, working with Johnny Winter on those Hard Again albums that brought Muddy back. Uh, all the work you've been doing lately with with so many people, I just appreciate so much that you're coming in here to Don's and we're going to get a chance to hear you. So I, I, I appreciate being able to do that. Yeah. But let me tell I, you what the, the concept of, of my album, oh, yeah, this yeah. New, one, new one is. Uh, and it came to me over the last few months as I did it, it developed this way. 
I, I decided to make it a self-titled album, mm -hmm. and because it's going to be really who I am now, but without anybody else playing on it, as much as I love to collaborate. Right. But th this one is me collaborating with myself and having some happy accidents sometimes. Nice, that's nice. Have, have, it, it. have it go well, but I wrote about six new songs mm -hmm. and developed them, and then recorded eight more that are cover songs, but not just covers of songs that I like, covers of songs that are people that I played with, like some by Muddy, mm -hmm. some by Johnny Winter, right. one by Snooky Pryor. Oh, nice. uh, there's a couple of songs by Leroy Carr, who was oh, yeah. died way before I did, but Muddy had done one uh, Blues Before Sunrise yep. that seemed to redeem him when he played it. It was a song from his youth, and he would start it out being very blue and sad and lonesome, and then by the end of the song, don't have to worry no more. Yeah, yeah. Pine Top used to sing How Long I love all Pine the time. Top doing How Long. Yeah. So I, I recorded those two songs in tribute to both. Oh, nice. To, to each of them. Nice. As well as a couple of Muddy Waters songs and yeah. a Snooky Pryor <laughs> one. And there's, uh, as you've seen, I've done some uh, Last Wall celebration yep. Yep. shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got inspired by those two. I was, uh, uh, Warren Haynes and Don Was yep. were the musical directors, and we had all these amazing musicians, including later Garth Hudson from the, the from band. the band, yeah. and uh, John Medeski on keyboard wow. sometimes, Michael McDonald singing and playing, who is an amazing musician. Yeah. Uh, and uh, j j yeah. just uh, uh, Jamie Johnson uh, from mm -hmm. the, uh, world of uh, kind of outlaw country music okay. yeah. uh, was just fantastic. Boy, could he sing Levon Helm songs. Oh, oh man. Uh, yeah. And I was very inspired by all that. And just like at the original Last Waltz, at the end of the night, all the musicians would come out and sing the song, I Shall Be Released. Yeah. And so I made a version of that for the album. Oh, nice, nice. Well, I so appreciate your time here, Don O'Dell's. And I also want to take a moment to thank you personally for all the shepherding around the world that you did with legends like Pine Top and Willie Big Eyes Smith and Hubert, Kerry Bell. Uh, there were so many times that I would see you playing as their sidemen, as you were taking those guys around the world and making sure that everything was good for them. So I thank you with them not being here for, for the care you took in, in making sure that their lives were, were worthwhile. Thank you. Well, join me in thanking them. Yeah, you bet. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Margolin tonight with Tyler Morris here at Don O'Dell's.